Uh, hello everyone, it's my pleasure to be here today at least virtually. My name is Gabriel Perez, I'm a postdoc at Goak Ridge National Lab, and I'm very, very excited to share with all of you the kind of research that we do to address the societal problem of natural extreme events, in this case, flood events. This project is funded by the Department of Energy. In particular, our focus is on understanding and simulating extreme flood events, a topic of critical importance given the increasing frequency of such events, not only in the US, but worldwide. So to kick things off, I want to pose four questions for all of you to think about during the presentation. What causes a flood? Maybe extreme rainfall is the first one that comes into your mind low infiltration capacity of the soil, or maybe poor water infrastructure design, or maybe all of them. How can we predict floods? We can use observations, use statistical methods, machine learning, or maybe use physical based models where we simulate all the processes that goes for the generation of extreme flood events. What's the 100 year flood? We usually hear this name as a description of a large flood, but how do we calculate this value? What is this for? And finally, is flooding getting worse? And probably the first thing that comes into your mind here is the role of climate change in extreme events. So turning our attention to the impact of floods, we need to understand that flood events are physical phenomena that evolve in space and time covering, in a lot of cases, large extensions with dramatic socioeconomic impact. A good example, just three years ago, we witnessed the devastating Mississippi River flood in 2019, affecting more than 14 million people in the region. These floods broke records dating back to the historic 1927 flood, which had a profound impact on engineering practices related to flood protection infrastructure. Actually, from a national scale, consider these statistics from the FEMA. Approximately 70% of urban line lies within the 100-year flood zone. This means that residents in these areas face a 1% chance of experiencing a 100-year flood each year. What's even more concerning is that recent floods have been superpassing more frequently previous estimations of these so-called 100-year flood events. Overall, we need to keep in mind that flood prediction is a very challenging problem because it involves multiple interactions of water moving across the landscape that is affected by natural factors, such as extreme rainfall, snow melt, and human-induced factors, such as changes in land use, deforestation, and inadequate drainage systems. So, to address the complex challenge of estimating flood events, one of the most promising strategies involves the use of physics-based distributed hydrologic models. I know it's a long word. These models allow us to simulate hydrologic processes across landscapes and river channels. Here on the left, there is an example showing the different fluxes represented on these models. In simpler terms, these models help us to trace the transformation from rainfall into a stream flow. An example of this transformation is presented in this animation. Yes. Where by using the hydrological model by the Iowa Flood Center, the rainfall here on the left is transformed and mapped to a stream flow here on the right for the entire state of Iowa. However, the large number of variables in states that contribute to floods makes virtually impossible to identify all potential scenarios that creates this phenomenon. Yet there is a practical solution. If we could create a lone statistical significant number of rainfall events, an example here on the left, then we can use those in a hydrological model to estimate the magnitude and extension of flood events. And then from there, we can draw meaningful conclusions and estimate the 100 year flood. Now, the challenge lies in conducting such an experiment. 
as it requires simulating a large number of flood events and addressing limitations from previous efforts, which often relies on model simplifi simplifications and lower spatial and temporal resolutions. So with this in mind, and thanks to the immense computer resources available at NERS Permuter, we perform a groundbreaking experiment for the first time. We use a full integrated surface-subsurface hydrology model to simulate a, stang a staggering number of 5,000 flood events. Keep in mind that this level of detail and fidelity in the model represents an unprecedented set of simulations. So, as part of the urban IFL project funded by the Department of Energy, we select the Village Creek watershed in Southeast Texas as our case study, covering an area of approximately 2,000 square kilometers. This region presents a complex hydrological landscape where understanding flood mechanisms is crucial. So, to conduct this experiment, we combine coordinate numerical models First, we employ the stochastic storm transposition framework, known as rainy day, to generate 5,000 realistic extreme storm events. Then we calculate the resulting floods for each of these events using the full integrated hydrologic model called Advanced Terrestrial Simulator, ATS. Keep in mind that this ambitious effort required a total of 40,000 node hours in NERS Permuter, which is one of the most ambitious campaigns that we have done here in Oak Ridge National Lab in terms of flood prediction. So now let's dive into some of our simulation results. For each flood event, we were able to track the evolution of all fluxes within the system. Specifically, we focus on two key variables the peak flow during the flood event, essentially the maximum value of a stream flow during the entire flood event, and the ponded water depth, which provides insights into the spatial and temporal evolution of the flood plane and help us estimate potential flood risk. Basically here on the top panel, you have an example of one of these 5,000 simulations. And basically we repeat the same experiment 5,000 times obtaining a more comprehensive description of how these events can evolve across space and time and diverse rainfall configurations. So from these 5,000 simulations, we derive variable insights into frequency magnitude flood events within the domain. Here on the left, you can see a flood frequency curve uh, where basically is illustrating and showing the magnitude of flood events for different return periods. In this case, you can see with the red X, the location of the magnitude of the 100 year uh, flood event. The results from these simulations are presented with the blue curve showing the uncertainty for the realization of the 5,000 events. And for reference, the curves on red and green are based on more traditional methods that, all, that use only limited uh, amount of observations. Overall, since our results are based on physical principles are of critical importance in engineering design for flood protection infrastructure and water infrastructure design. So additionally, this is quite exciting uh, we have also calculated for the first time the basin inundation fraction frequency curve. Basically here we are showing the percentage of the watershed that becomes inundated during a flood event for different return periods. And this was only able because we could simulate more, we could simulate 5,000 flood events. So for instance, during a hundred year flood, roughly 10% of the watershed area experiences water levels of at least one meter depth. This information is invaluable for assessing flood risk across the entire domain. And this result was only possible again by combining the state-of-art hydrological model ATS with the immense computer power of NERS Permuter. 
So just some final remarks here. I want to emphasize that our results were made possible for the by the use of computational resources provided by permuter. This represents a significant step forward in our ability to identify moral defects of both natural and human-induced factor on flood events. And what's coming? So as we look to the future, we are preparing for a new set of simulations. These simulations will encompass a large spatial domain, including the urban area of Beaumont, Texas. And we're going to consider a wider range of hydrological scenarios, including future climate conditions and the impact of human factors, such as changes in land use and water infrastructure. And basically, that's all that I have. So thank you all for your attention. And I'm now open to any questions you may have. You. Does anyone in the room have a question? Yes. S speak loudly. Um, I'm from the Netherlands, so I'm very familiar with flooding. Um, <laughs> of course, there's the political decision one in a hundred year flood. I think in the Netherlands, it's built for one in a thousand year floods, and that nobody would live in a in an area that would, would experience a one in a hundred year flood, but that's that's all separate discussion. Um, I find it very interesting how accurate you can predict it. Now, can you do similar studies for sea um, ocean flooding, sea, I mean, hurricanes, uh, storms in particular, then coupled also with what well, may be an increase in number of hurricanes and intensity of hurricanes? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Really, really good question. So, so actually, that's that's one of the main goals of the project. As you see, we are working on Southeast Texas. Oh, okay. So, so that's the store. I, I was more thinking of direct the 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 waves from the ocean. That was the what this looks more like the the rain that's associated with the hurricane. Yeah, yeah. So you, I think you are talking about the storm surge from from the ocean. Yeah. yeah so so th that's the next step. So basically, this is the the campaign number one. So this was like at the test to show that this is possible. Yeah. The campaign number two. Actually, we are going to the coast. So we're gonna get a boundary condition that represent the physical constraint of having you know a higher water sea level, a lower representing right. the water, the, the storm surge. But yeah, that, that's something that we need to keep in mind, mostly for the location that we are doing the study. And then if you have a high tide in combination with a river at high levels, that's when the problem is. It becomes more interesting, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Wonderful, thank you so much.